Hi, my name is Manny Alipani, I am Dean and Professor at Citro Academy, and I'd like to welcome you to another session of Citro Channel. The topic of today's discussion is different type of forces in orthodontics. After we design our mechanotropy, it's time to decide what type of forces we like to apply. In general, forces in orthodontics, dentofacial orthopedics are divided to three main categories. The first group is the static forces, where the magnitude and direction of the force for a period of the time does not change. It's a static. These forces depend on the duration of application can be considered continuous or interrupted. Continuous are those forces that for a long period of time, the source of the force applies a force to your biological target, whether it is a tooth or a skeleton, it exposed to the same force for a longer time. For example, you having braces and wire, and the wire is active for three weeks. During that three weeks, you are producing a continuous static force. Magnitude and direction of the force does not change significantly. Of course, it changes because the target is going to move and therefore that there is a decay in the magnitude of the force. But for the sake of argument, these are negligible. This is not that much that we should change the category of our forces. It's negligible. This is considered a static continuous forces. Sometimes the period that the patient is exposed to the continuous static continuous forces are way, way shorter, a couple of hours per day. Therefore, we consider them interrupted forces. For example, you have a uh, giving patient a liner to use. And every two hours, three hours, patients remove the aligners to do some activity, and that's considered interrupted forces. The magnitude and direction is not changing during that two or three hours, it just stops and continues. The second group of forces that we're using in the orthodontics and dentofacial orthopedics are dynamic forces. Dynamic forces are forces where the magnitude or magnitude and direction of the force changes. Based on this definition, the dynamic forces themselves can be categorized to intermittent forces and vibrational forces. Intermittent forces are forces that we apply to biological target, keeping the direction the same. Just quickly, the magnitude of the forces changes from zero to the amount that we have or minimum to the maximum, not necessarily zero. But the magnitude changes without changing the direction. For example, it's almost like a, uh, you are applying an impact force on the occlusal surface of the tooth, such as uh, occlusal function. You're changing the morphology of the tooth and the tooth during the short period of occlusion at one second exposed to the same magnitude of the force several times. However, the direction has stayed the same. That's an intermittent force. On the other hand, you have vibrational dynamic forces that both magnitude and direction changes. In another word, in one time, the tooth needs to move from mesial to distal, the other time moves from distal to mesial in a short period of time. So they are dynamic. The magnitude goes from minimum to maximum and back in a short period of time, the direction can go in the opposite direction in short period of time. So dynamic forces are another sources of forces that we use in orthodontics and especially dentofacial orthopedics. In the third categories, sometimes we combine static forces and dynamic forces. The patient, for example, is exposed to aligners or is exposed to braces. And for short period of time, we ask the uh, patient to apply these dynamic forces during the day. We are superimposing a dynamic force on top of the static force that we are applying. They may have synergic effect on that moment, 
means that they are producing a good combination that uh, activate a specific biological reaction. We are going to talk about dynamic forces and their effects in another video. Or they may completely stay separate from each other. It means that the, each one of the type of forces have its own biological target and they not necessarily increase each other effects. So these are the type of the forces that we need to decide during our mechanotropy design which one of this type or combination of them we are going to use. The second decision is are we going to have a, a contact forces or non-contact forces. Contact forces are the forces where the source of the force and the biological target, for example the tooth, they are in contact with each other. You are using aligners, you are using braces and wire. They contact the material contact the surface of the tooth, the material is the source of the force, the tooth is a biological target, the force transfers directly to biological target, and you can predict what you want to achieve. But not all the sources of the forces requires to contact. For example, I have a magnet on the surface of the tooth, and I'm using an electromagnetic field to apply the force. In this condition, the source of the force does not touch the target. However, the force is applied. Still, there is point of application, there is magnitude, and there is direction. Much more complex, but it can be defined. So again, you need to decide which one of these category of forces you are going to use. The most common one are the uh, one that the source of production of the force and the biological tar target, they contacting each other. We are going to talk about the non-contacting forces later on, but not in this discussion. In the next session, we are kind of talking about how to use the property of the material to produce a force. I hope you enjoyed this session of CITO channel. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe. And please don't forget to press the like button. Thank you.